on the opposing quarterback, whether it's Derek Carr, whether it's Justin Herbert, or whether it's Patrick Mahomes. It's going to have to be a team effort, run game, coaching well, playing great defense. I think that this team will be fighting for second or third in the division. I have the Chargers winning it. The Kansas City Chiefs, to me, is the next best team. But if the Denver Broncos can gel and Russell Wilson can give them an MVP caliber, MVP caliber season, then I believe they have a chance to be a playoff team. I would add to the mix that their defense, which was so good last year, was obviously they had a defensive-minded yep. head coach, and that changes this year to mm -hmm. the unproven new head coach who they bring in who has the offensive background. Not suggesting the defense won't be excellent. They have good players on that side of the ball, but maybe that's at least part of the statistical greatness of that defense last year. What do you see in Denver? I see a fourth-place team. We're burying the lead. Nathaniel Hackett is a rookie, and as Hembo reminded me, Greeny, 20% mm. of the time a rookie head coach makes the playoffs. Ten seconds ago, I put Josh McDaniels into Canton. Right. You have Andy <laughs> Reid, right? Brandon Staley has learned a lot from what his experience. So while Nathaniel Hackett may wind up being a good head coach, it's a massive grade of incomplete, and you're going against great coaching. So with everybody else having the same amount of fireworks, the tiebreaker to me is the head coach. It's a very underrated aspect of this analysis, and that's why they're the fourth best team. Yeah, and here's what I'm watching with the head coach and the quarterback, Russell Wilson, because mm -hmm. I know a lot of coaches around the league are watching this. Russell Wilson, for as great as he is, he doesn't get rid of the ball fast. I got a stat from Hembo here. Snap to pass. Russell Wilson ranked 30th in the league at getting rid of the ball. Aaron Rodgers, where Nathaniel Hackett was in Green Bay, ranked 10th. So Rodgers won MVPs when he came around on that Matt LaFleur, Nathaniel Hackett offense of getting rid of the ball quickly. So Russell's going to have to adjust, transition his game. That's the knock on him. Does he sit in the pocket, take too many sacks? All right. So, that, look, there's, there's nothing worse you can possibly do 50 days before the season starts than make picks on who's going to finish last in a division. But that's what we're here for, folks. So we're not going <laughs> to tell you who's going to win the AFC West. We're going to tell you who's going to finish last because it's probably the best. Look, the team that finishes last in the AFC West – might win the right. NFC North if you picked them up and transplanted yes. them there. But those aren't on the list of options. So, Tannenbaum, of all the teams in that loaded division, who's the likeliest, in your opinion, to finish last? The Denver Broncos, because of the inexperience of the head coach, love Russell Wilson, but they are the fourth-best team this year. Fowler, how about you? I'm going to go with the Raiders. Josh McDaniels might make his way to Canton right now. <laughs> He's living in Henderson, Nevada. Okay, so I don't trust their defense completely just yet. And they're still probably going to win nine or ten games. I just don't see them getting over Denver, which has been poised to break out for a while now. Now they have the quarterback to do it. All right, see, I needed you during my radio conversation. We'll get you back on that a little bit later in the show. But who's, they're not, who's finishing last? Please tell me you don't think it's Vegas, because if so, I'm not circling back to that topic. <laughs> Guys. Guys, guess what's crazy? Mike Tannenbaum actually convinced me in this very short period of time that it's going to be the Denver Broncos. I didn't think about the head coach thing. That's why Mike T was the GM. But when you look at the Denver Broncos, we don't know what this team will be. I feel we are more confident than the other three. Denver Broncos are most likely to finish in fourth. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I mean, there's three of us are going to go that way. I'll go with Denver as well. And, it, and it's, it's painful to say it because I think Russell Wilson comes with a lot of expectation and a lot of Hope. I think he wants it so badly, and I hope that for his sake, eventually he gets it. But I think it's going to rock you, Sim, but Green, they only had six interceptions a year ago, worse than the NFL. And you think about that division and Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, obviously Patrick Mahomes. Their vulnerability is a bad matchup in the division. They're going to finish third in the AFC West. You know what happens when your defensive backs aren't that good? You rush the heck out of the passer, and that team could already do it. And now they add Chandler Jones to do it. Fowler, what do you think? Yeah, after asking around last night, this morning, the sense I get on the Raiders is they they still feel like they're probably a few pieces away on defense. They need a few young players to step up in a big way to have a chance there, but they believe they can score on anybody with Darren Waller, Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, Derek Carr might be the most underrated quarterback in the entire league right now. So it's going to be a light show in the AFC West every week. Derek Carr had a sneaky great year last year and was very good in the playoff loss to Cincinnati. And if you put together the numbers, I just did a little math and Darren Waller missed some time last year, but we all know when he is fully healthy, he's as productive right there on the level of productivity with the top tight ends in the league with your um, with, with, with the Kelsey's and yeah. everybody else that you want but you put together the numbers that Devontae Adams oh by the way did I mention they added Devontae Adams the best receiver in the NFL you put together the numbers of Devontae Adams Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller last year they combined for 281 receptions and 22 catches you tell me who's going to have if Carr has the year of which I believe he is capable you tell me who has a more explosive offense right now than the Raiders are capable of having with Josh McDaniels calling the place. They're going to be hard to defend, and I would take it a step further from a 
fantasy football and a defensive perspective, Kenyon Drake and Hunter Renfro Greeny are going to have massive years because when you work with guys like Rex Ryan, Eric Mangini, they always talk about who do we have to take out of the game. They're going to double, as you said, Darren Moore. They're going to double Devontae Adams. So I think the ball is going to get spread around. That's what Josh McDaniels does so well. So I agree. They will be hard to defend. And I think guys like Kenyon Drake and Hunter Renfro will have massive statistical years. But again, Derek Carr has to fix his turnover problem. He led the league in fourth quarter and overtime turnovers, Greeny, and that part's going to have to be cleaned up. Yeah, and Carr needs to make a step forward, of which I'm basically banking he is capable. That, that's the question. He has shown very goodness over the course of time. Yes. Does he have greatness in him? I'm predicting that he does. Here's my next question, or not so much a question, but I was reading your notes to us yesterday, Jeremy, and that is that not only has Devontae Adams come in and picked up the offense yep. in, immediately, but that he's already teaching it to everybody, and they are overwhelmed by his presence so far. Yeah, talking to people with the Raiders, the word effortless comes up with Adams and his transition to Josh McDaniels' offense, which usually veterans can, can help bridge that gap. But they said that he's come in helping young receivers. He's on point. He's a smart player. And I, I was told some coaches had some sneaky suspicion that Adams and Derek Carr were working with each other before they even showed up for OTAs in minicamp. That's how on point and how good the chemistry was early on this offseason. Look, Devontae Adams is a guy who knows what he's doing. He made his choice. You don't leave Aaron Rodgers as a free agent when the team that he's on is offering you just as much, if not more, money. If you don't think the place you're going and the guy who's going to be throwing you the ball there can get the job done. I'm not suggesting Derek Carr can be Aaron Rodgers. No one can be Aaron Rodgers. But I think he can be more than good enough to make this a, a significantly dangerous team. Yeah, and what you get with Derek Carr is stability. I mean, you're hoping that Derek Carr and Josh McDaniels are paired for the next 10 years and greeting, you know, no one's talked more about Aaron Rodgers than we have for the last couple of years. Right. And, and that had a drain on Devontae Adams. I think it says a lot about Derek mm -hmm. Carr's leadership and his intangibles, which is really a massive part of the job description of being a franchise quarterback. So if that man, Josh McDaniels, could clean up Derek Carr's proclivities to turn the ball over late in the game, they will be hard to beat. And you told me this morning you believe Josh McDaniels in his second crack at head coaching will be much better than he was the first time. This could be Bill, Bill Belichick 2.0. <laughs> Bill Belichick had up and down career in Cleveland, goes to New yeah. England, the rest is history. Same thing. Joshua's endeavor up and down. Josh McDaniels is a smart guy. He's self-aware. I think he's going to be outstanding this time around. All right, again, yeah. so we're having some technical issues with Russell, uh, with uh, with Ryan Clark, who will join us in just a moment. I I'm just positive he's going to agree with me. In the meantime, let's get to, <laughs> let's get to Russell Wilson, who posted a video on Twitter yesterday of himself working out with his new teammates, and what has everyone's attention is the message on his cleats. It says fourth coming soon with a Lombardi trophy. The Broncos have won three Super Bowls in their history, so there's very little mystery what he means. And I am told that we do have Ryan Clark signal ready to go now, so it is my delight to bring R.C. into the camp. Good morning, R.C. Hey. It is a pleasure to have you here. Let's jump into that. Russell Wilson is putting uh, Lombardi trophies on his cleats. There are a lot of people who are wondering just how good that team is going to be in what might be the best division in NFL history. What's your sense of it right now? Listen, I think this team could be good, but you don't just plug a guy in and expect everything to work out perfectly. This was a defense that's, that was ascending last year. You add a pass rusher in Randy Gregory, and we know what happens when Russell Wilson goes 